Ghostbusters are back. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife is the movie. Joe, uh, I didn't even know was, was going to do the video with me, but... Spontaneous. Spontaneous. You just saw it. I hadn't done the video yet. Let's talk Ghostbusters Afterlife. Hey guys, yes indeed, it is Dan here and Joe. We're going to talk Ghostbusters Afterlife. Mm -hmm. um, this is kind of a, a fun little surprise because you were coming over to do a different video. Yeah. And we got talking a little bit about how we both saw Ghostbusters Afterlife in the last 24 hours or so. And to be honest, I wasn't um, sure if I was even going to see it, but I thought, uh, you know, it might be worth seeing since I had the time and... Um... Yeah, so yeah. I saw it with my buddy uh, Troll and uh, went from there. Okay, well, we're going to talk. I saw it with my nephews, uh, so we got a nice kid perspective uh, going into it as well. Um, and he's a bigger fan of Ghostbusters than I am. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you're like an okay fan. I'm like, I appreciate it. And I'll be honest, I never saw the original in full until about 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, I've seen it now, I think, four or five times, you know, in total. But... Um, but yeah, look, we'll talk about all of this and more. Uh, first, we want to recommend uh, that you subscribe to the channel if you are uh, new to Dan Reviews It. We would love to uh, have you aboard. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subs by the end of the year. What are you at now? I don't know. 876 or something. I think it's doable. So, eh, we'll, we'll see. But even 900 would be cool. Yeah, um, but, get but either way, yes. If, if you're not a subscriber, please think about subscribing. Uh, number two, um, as with most of the videos when Joe is on, we are going to talk spoilers later. Eventually. We'll do uh, our, our basics, the, the review portion, we'll give our grades, and then the last, whatever, eight, ten minutes will be sort of spoiler territory. Sure. Because um, there's going to be some of that here. All right, so this is, uh, you know, a, a approved, stamp of approval by the uh, original Ivan uh, Reitman, uh, because he's a producer here, and he... Uh, his son is directing. Jason, Jason Reitman yes. is the director. He directed Juno, Up in the Air, all the all the great movies. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I don't think it had anything to do with female Ghostbusters in 2016. Maybe I, he was a producer. I think was his dad. But a I think I think his dad was a producer. Which really just um, means could just mean a stamp of I say this is okay. Yes, I say, all right, I guess so. That could be the level of... Input. Yeah, produced by Ivan Reitman, the old one. Okay, well, that's fine. Or the 2016. The, uh, that's fine. Most recent um, uh, redo. But we're talking about, really, this new one, which is the full stamp of approval. Aykroyd, who uh, wrote, co-wrote, I should say, the original with Harold Ramis, mm -hmm. um, has a, a role here as well. And I don't think that's super spoilery. I think that's been in the news for a long, long time. Uh -huh. um, but what I didn't quite expect is that this entire movie really is a tribute to Harold Ramis. Uh, uh, his character is at the center of this film. Of the story, yeah. You know, um, we see in the very first scene, again, you know, I don't think this is too spoiler. It happens in the first two minutes of the movie. Yeah. Um, but his his character, well, we don't out. we don't know for sure yet that it's his character, but it's pretty obvious. He's got the glasses. He's got the hair. Um, so he's on this. But he's in shadows. And yes. On the farm. But yeah. he's on this this old dirt farm in the middle of nowhere. Oklahoma, um, I think. Yeah. yeah. I think that's right. Um, they refer to him as dirt farmer all over the town. He's very reclusive. Nobody knows about him. But he uh, ends up, you know, dying in that very first scene. So the whole basis of the movie is kind of a mystery. His daughter. Um, and grandkids. And grandkids who we know, uh, both of them actually, from the, the boys from Stranger Things, mm -hmm. um, who is, is the, uh, Finn Wolfhard, girl. and then the girl McKenna Grace. Uh, she has never looked like this before. Usually she's blonde, yeah. but she is uh, on Young Sheldon. She is. She was in a movie called Gifted that was very good. Okay. Um, so she's done a few things. She's been around a bit. Okay. Um, and But then the mom is played by Carrie Coon, who we've seen, I think, in some other things. Let me see. Oh, The Leftovers. People love that show. Yeah. The Leftovers. All right. Um, oh, and she was in one of the Fargo seasons, too. Oh. Sorry. Um, so anyway, they now take over this house because they are dirt broke. They got, they're got like running out of rent on their apartments. So they're basically kicked out. So they, they have yes. nowhere else to go. So they just move here because it was given to them. Essentially. Yeah, essentially. They inherited it. And uh, Finn Wolfhard's character, Trevor, he has the hots for this uh, young girl at the uh, uh, soda shop or whatever. Diner, yeah, like the 50s diner sort of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't know who plays her. Oh, Celeste O'Connor. Oh, and, um, and then we got podcast. podcast. Well, you know, all right. You, you was know, I ever going to forget yeah, podcast? Yeah, my what, favorite what, character, what, what, of my course. favorite character, my favorite um, character. His name, <laughs> his name is of course not really podcast, but that's what he calls himself, and that's the only thing we know him as. Yeah. Um, but he's played by Logan Kim, and he is another one in the run of these adorable sidekick 
uh, friend characters. Uh -huh. Now, of course, his friend is uh, the McKenna Grace character, Phoebe. So, you know, there's maybe a little bit of romance tension there. Sure. But, you know, these are kids, so who knows. But... <laughs> Um, but he yeah. reminded me of Spider-Man's buddy. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah, that's exactly what I could say. The, uh, <laughs> I'll be your guy in the chair, like his. Yes. Yeah, that and also the um, kind of also the Godzilla movies. Miller Bobby Brown's buddy. Oh, that's right. They, they from the, uh, the the from King the, of the monsters. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So th that that sort of young crew of that sort of commentary. Yeah. That very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So look, before okay. before we go too far into our thoughts. Um, sure. Let's talk about our history with the Ghostbusters. You said yourself, you're not a huge fan, but uh, you know you like the I mean, movie, I the like first it. movie. It's good. I get it, but like I'm not like I'm not a huge fan like a lot of right. other people. I feel like I think I mentioned that before. This for me was when I did finally see the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I got it. It was one of those where it's, you know sometimes Princess Bride's an example of a movie where it's like it's been so hyped up for 30 years. Uh -huh. I finally saw it and I was like, all right, it's it's a, it's fine. This though, Ghostbusters, I totally get. It's sure. like Die Hard. Die Hard, I didn't see it until about six years ago, and I was like, yep, I'm in. I get why this is you get a movie that everyone loves. Yeah. Uh, and I felt the same about this. Uh, Ghostbusters 2, I had seen bits of when I was a kid, but I haven't seen it since. I like Ghostbusters too. Um, and then we've got female Ghostbusters, uh, yeah. which is called Ghostbusters Answer the Call. Uh, from, is that what it's called? I guess, officially or oh. something. Hmm. Um, I think that's what it says. Do I have it? I always just saw, I thought maybe it's one of those things where they hid the subtitle or they changed it, you know, lived out, repeat, edge of tomorrow. Well, again. I think they might have actually done that, to be honest. Changed it again. I do uh, have it. Um, which I think you will. Yeah, I mean, it says Ghostbusters answer. You can sit, tell I never even opened it. Huh. Uh, Ghostbusters answer the call, it says. But then the spine does just say Ghostbusters, so I don't huh. know. Um, but in any event, that was uh, a swing and a miss. Okay. I liked some things about it. And I, it's I, a I graded show. I graded it higher than you yes. when we originally saw it. I don't even remember what I saw. I think I was in the B B plus range. I th I thought for what it was, it was fine. I think if the original Ghostbusters never existed, people would have enjoyed it more, certainly. I think I gave it a B minus. Like I think it was uh, all right. It was I, I enjoyed it, but it's like I, I had a lot of issues with it too. Well and what's weird is the best part of that movie really was Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, it was <laughs> like barely a when, when you're doing, you know, the all female Ghostbusters, the the female should be the best part of it, theoretically. And for some reason, for me, they just weren't. That was the selling. Point. They were fine. Yeah. I mean, I love Kate McKinnon, obviously Kristen Wiig. These are some of my favorites. Sure, but um, it's kind of unfocused. It was a little unfocused. I did enjoy it, but um, I I I, I we've talked so much about all the hatred before anybody sure. even saw it. But here we have this pedigree because you've got everybody behind it. Full, and not just like and full, yeah. In the, level. In, in the female version, there were cameos, but they didn't add to the story. Really. No, and the, and it wasn't in the same universe because they weren't playing the same characters. Yeah, here this is really a Tie very very direct sequel. Sequel, um, you know. And Paul Rudd, we haven't mentioned yet, but he plays the other adult lead. The teacher. He's uh, the the teacher, Gary Gustafson or something, something like right? Um, is that what his name is? It's Gary it's Gary Gruberson. Gruberson. I was close. Um, and Paul Rudd plays him, and Phoebe is attending his summer school class. He ends up just showing horror movies because he's so bored with everybody. Cujo and Charles play. Um, but <laughs> she has a, a scientific mind like her grandfather, so the two of them sort of bond over that. Podcast gets included then with that. Um, so, all weekend, for the two days leading up to me seeing it, I, I just, my Facebook was littered with people who were loving this movie. And I was shocked. Because I think Ghostbusters is one of those movies where it's like it would be real easy to mess it up. To mess it up because people. everyone loves it so much. They're very critical. Fan very bases. critical fan one, base. One of the most obvious we saw with the the 2016 one. Very devoted and protective. Protective. Al almost to a fault. Yes. Yeah, probably. I actually would say that. <laughs> but look, it has fans for a reason. Sure. And uh, the fact that this was getting such great raves from people in my personal life that I know are diehard Ghostbusters fans. Impressive really spoke to me and then i saw the the uh, rotten it's at 96 percent for the audience wow. um lower certainly for the critics i think it's 62 when we looked but 96 percent audience is, is huge for something that could have easily gone wrong true um so what went right about this movie um i feel like i've talked a lot but i'll, I'll just name a couple things I mean, and then you can talk but sure. um, i mean i'm about to say like uh, yeah go ahead first of all the casting is fantastic yeah one thing i thought of while i was watching it is these kids specifically the yeah. adults of course are fine paul rudd is always good sure um carrie coon i'm not really familiar with but she was she very was good. good as well mm -hmm. um uh but the the kids 
are excellent. The uh, main actress, the, the young ones. Yeah, the young yeah ones, McKenna Grace. But she she was like the heart of this movie. She, she really, really was. She carried so much of this movie. Yes. She was very, very excellent. She was great. Wonderful. And wonderful, great. You have to see some of her other movies. Gifted. I think it's the first time I've ever um, seen her. I thought she was Actually, awesome. Chris Evans is in Gifted. He plays the father. Oh, nice. Um, Marvel tie-in. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. And Ant-Man was in this uh, and the whole thing. Um... But I was thinking, because you know me, I do the TV shows every week. You do. And there's a lot of shows with kids that can't act. They're horrible, <laughs> whatever. Um, they and, really can act. Oh, my God. They're so good here. Mm -hmm. um, and Finn Wolfhard is fine. Uh, I, I think he, he, he oh. has one of my issues in the movie, which we'll get to. It's not his fault. I kind of um, agree with, I think, what you're going to say. But Podcast and McKenna Grace, uh, <laughs> Phoebe, great. are excellent yes. and they really are like you said the heart of the movie love that yes. um number one number two i think there are enough callbacks to the original plenty certainly easter it's eggs. E easter eggs but certainly because it's in the same universe mm -hmm. we see a lot of things popping up for example the old commercial they did oh yeah you know we, we see it. that they worked out in a couple of different times it's on youtube now of course that's awesome um and just a few things sprinkled in but I don't think th I didn't think of this as a nostalgia grab of a film. I thought this was a film with a new story to tell. It's got yeah. some of the same elements. Um, yes. So you think it's a cash grab? Is it's what a. You're it's a very, very, very well done nostalgia cash grab. It, I mean, it, it is, and you're allowed to do that. The when I, I was, guess when I, I I think it's more than that. To be honest. Uh. It is a little bit. I'm looking well, at your shirt I, I, here, it, and I think I, this is the nostalgia cash grab of the of the well, lifetime. And here. I was going to mention up because right? I was talking to Troll about it. I, maybe in the uh, maybe in the video that we did, but it was uh, when I think of I think that Jurassic World. You know, and yeah. th those are very much nostalgia crafts, cash grabs where we'll have references and tie-ins, but it's basically the same thing again. Right. This is definitely adding more. It's very much its mm -hmm. own thing, but. To say that it's not heavily leaning on nostalgia when it's so connected to it, well, I guess is, that's true. And plus, you, and, and, uh, and we'll get to some other parts in the spoiler but edition. Even even but... uh, taking away from some of the substance, the substantive stuff, putting that away. Yeah, uh, troll who's a much bigger Ghostbusters fan than I am was putting, ooh, that that like all the Easter eggs. I'm like, no, this is if you're a Ghostbusters fan, it's too loaded with things all over the place that you can't say it's not that. Hmm. You, you're allowed to do it. Well, it be cash maybe, well done. maybe I missed some of them then because I didn't feel, I mean, like, yes, there was a lot of things. Like some of it's subtle. But... Like apparently when they go down to the basement, there's like the stack of books, which apparently was in the first movie and I don't know what that meant. So, oh, like, so right. like, so it's one of those. Well, all right, that's an obsessive fan though. But that's what I'm saying. Hey, listen, clearly there. listen, first CD I ever bought, it's over here in my stack. Clubs this is just, this uh, is just my over. soundtrack uh, rack over here. But listen, Ghostbusters 2 soundtrack was the first CD I ever Seriously? bought. Seriously? Yeah, because what? I love that Bobby Brown song, on our own. There they are That's on the your back. First CD you ever bought? Yeah, because of the you know you know CD. Now I bought records before that. Oh, oh I bought oh. records, but, but still. But once I upgraded the CD, that was the first one I ever bought. That and the Fine Young Cannibal. You're gonna have to show um, your collection. Itself. I know my collection. You see the 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 DVD because like you me, like but, see that's uh, interesting. You like music so much. You've got that even though you barely saw. I only actually too. knew the one song, and I uh, yeah I it's didn't just, really see the movie. That's but, interesting. But um, uh, anyway, but my point is. Yes, I think it's much more than that, but it's yeah, Jurassic World felt like the exact same movie again, basically, yeah. and, and it was, which was good. I didn't I, hate no, it, but that's what I'm saying. This it's like is, that Star Wars. What was that one where uh, Han Solo died? Or um, Awakens? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, and the same thing again. And I think that basically my biggest thing about this as a compliment is that yes, it's still because it's an I, it's a you know. What do you yeah, call intellectual it? property. It's, IP, it's, it's, it's yeah. an IP. Yes, it is a cash grab by in it. You know, in, it's, in of itself, I guess by but, definition. By yeah. definition, but okay. it is trying to do its own thing, you know, trying to actually be a sequel, telling its own story, adding on to and the And I lore, think it succeeds in that. Which it does, unlike certain other films that basically try to do it again. Yeah. not successfully 2016. Ugh, we could, you know. We could talk about that, but, yeah. So I, I think that it's definitely more than just that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I mean. That's, like, well, that was my point, yes. But it's, it's, I mean, but it's so, it's so connected to sentimentality. I guess that is true. That it's like, you know, it. I'm just saying that's the nature of movie For example, okay, for you example, know. you didn't need the Stay Puft Marshmallow Men in this movie. You did not. They added a lot of humor. Oh, look, all right, well, um, here's the thing. You know, here's we the see thing. this in the trailer, so that's not a spoiler. You're right. You, they didn't need it. 
But I'm happy it was there. I'm very happy it was there. I, it was one of my favorite. It was my nephew's favorite scene in the whole I mean, movie. It's adorable. He thought it was hilarious. They're cute when they were, you know, doing some, doing some things. Yeah, no, I I love it, um, and I thought, yeah, and that's that's clearly a obviously, you know, obviously tied into the right, movie. But, so you know, my ten year old nephew had never seen the original. Okay, he knows the song because it was in one of the Just Dance games, so he knew the song. Um, mm -hmm. And other than that. I don't think he really knew much about it. He knew who Slimer was, I guess. Classic. Um, classic. And maybe he knew about the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man existing. Okay. But he also sees trailers a lot, so who knows if he saw that just from that. Sure. But um, he loved this movie. I was afraid it might be a little scary for him. Because um, there were some definitely... Creepy some parts. Creepy parts. Some things that, uh, you know, some possession things, but whatever. But he seemed fine with that. Um, but he loved this movie. My 16-year-old nephew, who... Uh, had seen at least the first movie. I don't know if he saw any of the other ones. Um, but enjoyed the first one, you know. Also, really enjoyed this one. Sure. Uh, and I really enjoyed this one. Sure. And people I know that have seen the original millions of times mm -hmm. also like this. Like, I feel like this is a movie that is hitting everybody on the right level, whether you've even, whether you have any association at all with the original. Yeah. Um, and I think that's tricky. And I also think that this movie is so good in and of itself that it doesn't really need that tie-in. If you're unfamiliar, Correct. you could walk in, and I think it holds on its own very well as its own movie, yeah. which I think is the way to do a sequel. Yeah. you know, uh, Especially, yeah, right, one this far out. Which is weird. 35 so, it, years after the fact. And to have sure. something that's so directly connected as an homage to the first movie yeah. that it ties in to keep fans happy, but also not be pandering, right. but also be good for new viewers, is pretty darn impressive. And I kind of like, uh, let's talk about the effects for a second. Great effects. Uh, great effects. Some practical. So I was going to say that. Because of the look of that first movie, which, by the way, the first movie, also great effects. effects. Oh, my yep, God. Yep. I don't know if it won any awards for that, but sure, I, I'm probably. sure it was nominated at least, or maybe a Saturn Award or something. Probably. But um, great effects. Yes. And I think they really, really honed in on making the effects of things like the stream um, very, very, very authentic mm -hmm. to how it looked in the original. But just flashier. And a little brighter, flashier, but yeah. it looks the same. It really did. And I think that you could say that not just visually, but with the writing. You can tell that fine-tooth comb of writing just meticulously, little details. Like, yeah. there was a lot of care and you know, love put into this movie mm -hmm. all, with the effects and all over the place. So it's, yeah. And it's so obvious. And there, there's just a lot of passion there. And it's well done. It's so well done. I, I just feel like, not to harp again on 2016, but I, I feel like that You one, have to, though. Like, I, you have some to. Some things it didn't work Especially quite Especially... Because this one is so good. It's, and that's the, it kind of um, makes it. I, yeah. I do feel like to me, that was a cash grab only. Everybody wanted a third. Everybody was saying, we need three, we need three, we need three. Bill Murray had worked with Melissa McCarthy on St. Vincent. Uh -huh. And he had mentioned on David Letterman, I think they should do a female Ghostbusters with Melissa McCarthy and Kristen Oh, Wiig. well, Bill Murray said it. Let's and then it, it happened. You know, it's like that to me. And again, I didn't dislike the movie. But that, to me, felt like an inauthentic movie. Well, especially in retrospect. In retrospect. To compare to, At the time, like, I thought it was fine. You can, like, you can tell now, because of sure. things that happened in the movie. And just like yeah. you said, the detail, the sure. effect. Clearly made by Ghostbusters fans right. or Ghostbusters fans. Son of the director. Like, everybody's and the, and involved. This is like, what you know, it, it's there. Hollywood is noticing, though, with all the 90s nostalgia and 80s nostalgia, uh -huh. is that the people that are working on all of these movies, the executive producers, the writers, the the mm -hmm. everybody, yeah, the grips were they grew up on these movies. So they all So they have a stake in this. Yeah. They work harder to make sure yes. it's done well and I because think Because as fans it shows. they know what they would want to see on the screen. And so maybe if it's just a job and a bunch of people that aren't associated with it like maybe in 2016 it's going to show Yeah. because there's you know more involvement from the executives or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. So listen, uh let's we'll get into spoilers here in a moment uh mm -hmm. about some things. Okay. Very emotional movie. Uh -huh. um, that we'll talk about. But yeah, let's grade it first, I guess. We haven't mentioned any negatives. You said there were... Oh, I, I'm i sorry. You're right. I Before have, we... Because you might be like, I have well, two negatives. I do as well. Okay. I think. And we mentioned one about uh, Finn Wolfhard, so we can what's sort your, of delve in on that. What's your issue? You're right. Um, uh, my issue with it is that that uh, character was not very developed was compared say, to the develops. other ones. Yep. And uh, as a result, the romance was a bit lackluster. He's the driver and, and I gets a girl. I found myself not really caring about his story. Same. 
Um, so. and, and, and it's no detriment to him. I love him in Stranger Things. Under, a little you know, underwritten. But I just, I think his character was underwritten. Um, but look, the movie is two hours and four minutes. Uh, Maybe they could have given five more minutes to him. It didn't feel long. No. You know, so they could have given that. And then my only other negative really is, um, and I don't know how spoilery this is, it's, it's but gonna, it's probably it, gonna treads, it treads a bit maybe too closely uh, to some of the same characters uh, from the original. All right, well, then we'll have to go into spoilers right? because, and I felt so bad like I was nitpicking because yeah. I think Troll liked it better than I did. I know by his grade okay. he did. But I was just That's like, right. You already graded this in your own oh, video, yeah, and I, I don't know. I haven't uploaded it. Because you haven't put it. You can, and it's, um, uh, but, and I'll go more in depth here, yeah. honestly. That other video is pretty short. I mostly liked it, but okay. by the very nature of, for the most part, I like the fact that this movie tried to be its own thing, mm -hmm. but a big portion of it relies a little too heavily on the first movie, and yeah. I would have liked something maybe a little more original I in agree. that particular area. Yeah, I agree. Even though it was well done. Yeah. So All right. that's my negative. So uh, so let's grade it. You've already graded it for your own channel, so I'd love to hear your grade. Uh, it's an A minus. Okay. Now for me, uh, this was a teeter between A minus mm -hmm. and A. Okay. Uh, and I I actually uh, decided. Just give it an A. Dude. I am. I decided mm -hmm. to, to. Now don't tell me. Uh, <laughs> Do I it. no. I, I decided to give it an A because okay. I think this movie was incredibly difficult to pull off oh, sure. well. And and those two negatives we have, I think the the Finn Wolfhard one is They're negotiable. They're... <laughs> um, negotiable, and I think that the relying a little too you know heavily on that first one maybe uh, uh, you know could have been uh, handled better, but it didn't diminish my enjoyment of the movie at all. Same, like it did with Jurassic Park, uh, Jurassic World. No, I, I, so, I agree. And uh, if you'd like me to explain my grade a little more in that area, before we I don't think you need to because I was really teetering as well. I I think A minus is probably well fine. I I think um, just because I was you know I was once again surrounded by people who were clearly bigger Ghostbusters right. than me, and I saw how much they and loved you just it. felt oh, okay. I'm not quite on that I, level. And, and like if I if I like personally love Ghostbusters a little more like everybody else, I guess right. I, I would have given an A fully. So I admit there is a little more of like something that's not quite clicking for me. That's a me thing. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would probably be an A, but it felt like a good grade for it's me. It's funny, though. I thought the same thing, but with A and A+. Plus. I thought if I was more of a uber Ghostbusters fan, I'd probably give this thing an A+. Plus. What? Well, so I'll give it an A and sort of split the difference there. I mean, I, I could have um, gone up further, but the thing is my big issue with it, it felt like a stickler thing, but... I mean, it's it's about the villains, but I like yeah, it. I like an original villain. So so that I I agree, and so, that that was my and sort like, of issue am with I it. Being, but am I being a curmudge and stick? Like I'm not gonna give it no, the no because grade. look, A minus is still very good. I mean, it's uh, great very fair for this movie. Very good. Um, it very. If you gave it, an, if somebody gave it an A plus, I would not. In terms it. of personal enjoyment, it's still great. Um, I I know I've seen way more than you this year, but would you say this is uh you know where does this fall for you in personal enjoyment? Suicide Squad was very enjoyable to watch. Uh, um, oh, oh, I think Free Guy was enjoyable to watch. I gave that an A minus. Uh, I think I gave Suicide Squad an A minus as well. I think, um, um, but I enjoyed watching this probably more than both. Now, granted, I I watched both of those by myself, not with my nephews. So things, seeing I've, them delight always makes me happy I've too. Seen but less this year, well, I I'm mean, trying to think of like what are your tops of the year? I'd have to check it. I right? mean, it's such a short list. I, I mean, know. Well, right, well, well Dune, mean, of course. Well, Dune is number you one. Know, Dune's number one. I liked for you. Suicide Squad probably more than this because it's a little more my my right. thing. And I think I liked The Quiet Place too more than this. Quiet Place was great because now, it's see, more my thing. That's another. I gave that an A minus. So, so I gave all of these so movies like, A minus. I think they're about the same. So yeah, line, I, I think I, that's fine. I preferred those more. So okay. I'm probably forgetting something. Um, uh, but all right, well, let's get into uh, some spoilery territory now that we've given our grades. But I think A minus and A is right on the money. For yeah, this it's, movie. it's a great movie. I recommend it really it is. highly. But um, uh, spoilers. All right, so the ending and and the the character of Zool and all of Zool this Gozer. is where That's I my sort of yes, That's where I was like, all right, well, it's good. It's very I well actually. Done. About halfway through this movie, I was thinking this could be an A+. Plus. Oh, I thought it... I was thinking it too. I really was. And then they did the what? Gozer bit, and I was like, okay, I would have... Like you said, I would have liked to see something we, just a little more original. We have basically the same issues. Like, yeah. I was feeling... I was like, this is amazing. Yeah. And here's the thing I think I really almost gave it an A+. Plus. really impressive about this movie, which we didn't really talk about. It is mostly a slow burn movie. It's like an hour before yeah. anything really supernatural. Um, I happens. mean, that first scene, of course, is a little a stinger. You know, yeah, good stinger. But, but this movie is like almost an hour of people just talking and banter and family drama. But you with, know, with little, with little sprinkles, which is fine. 
It's a lot of what the first movie was, though. Not the family drama, more friend drama, but, but that library scene in the beginning, hook. great, good hook. Oh. And then we see them building the, the team up well, and doing this and that and, and having press conferences. And and, I, I think you know, that um, one thing that I, I didn't really talk about as, as one of my positives, but because I'm not such a big Ghostbusters, quite as big of a Ghostbusters fan, as much as I like that stuff, what really pulled me into the movie was the characters. The Ramus tribute? And they're... The yes, but but like the the characters, yeah. their dynamic, how real it seemed, and yeah. you know, like with the mom, she was. Great. Which is why it was so disappointing. They didn't quite flesh out Finn's character. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah, and I love. I humor completely agree because it's like it was very uh, deadpan, like the original, kind yes. of a little dark, a lot of yeah. it, and adult. But I appreciated it. Yeah. Uh, so well, I, and Paul Rudd has that same sense of dry humor that Bill Murray has, mm -hmm. and Harold Ramis. So, so I, I think that I, worked well too. And, and just her, like the corny jokes with her uh, social awkward. Yeah. I just I love these characters so much. Right. And the emotional notes were really good too later on. And like I said, Phoebe and Podcast were great together. Phoebe loved and podcast, that. But the the all the stuff for the original Ghostbusters yeah. there it was Gozer. It was great and my troll even pointed this out. It's like their arch enemy, so it makes sense they come back. Once again leaning into nostalgia a bit. Yeah. And it was well done. But if they had just had it to come back to fight a new original villain yeah, that was it would have been, not relying on I think on a it, little bit better. I agree. Then I would say, wow. Yeah. Wow, because... I agree. I Because that's the thing I liked, and I maybe that's the thing, too. I liked the villain in Ghostbusters 2 more. Okay. So Again, didn't see. So, so that's the um, thing. And, and I would have... I like expanding, and this is... Everything else about it was original. It was yeah. different. And this that, it was just... We can't... I think a little the too fact that most just a little too Ghostbusters uber fans are going to say that this is their number one or maybe number two movie of the year. Sure. I think that speaks volumes to how good this movie is. Yeah. You know? Because um, it would be real easy to nitpick it. And I, I think these are all like sort of nitpicking. a little bit nitpicks. But no, I, I would have liked a, an original villain as well. Let's talk about the cast of the originals coming back. Now, I knew, this is spoiler territory again, um, I knew they were going to save the day at the end. I did not. Because, okay, here's the only reason I did. Because I knew that Hudson and Murray were in it. And we were like five, eight minutes yeah, from the Jan credits. Aykroyd shows up and earlier. I was like, Ackroyd was the only one that we saw so far, which means he's going to gather the crew and they're going to go. I, so that part didn't surprise me. And again, this is why I hate spoilers. I hate reading articles. You know, I... The problem is this was supposed to come out a year ago because uh, of COVID. I think maybe if it came out during COVID, I wouldn't have known all of that but the build-up for this was an extra year because of it a lot of excitement um but did you notice by the way with the uh how it was supposed to be in 2020 when they went in the tomb and the different years were scrawled on yeah and they I said did, 2021 I couldn't, see, I couldn't see the one like yeah like, but they didn't it? my nephew pointed out 2020 something it said 2021 on it okay but they didn't they didn't say it out loud um, they, nobody never because to they they it. probably edited yeah so they I did notice that like why is the they shadow cleaned up the right they cleaned it up the zero and made a it little, a one a little different than the rest of the text yeah I knew it, it was done because it was dark and shadowy but I thought that too like wait yep I, wait twenty and my nephew pointed out they read uh, all the other years but they didn't read twenty twenty one whoops so oh, see a little issue in your almost perfect movie no 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 I actually pr I liked that they did that <laughs> I thought it was actually pretty cool but I, I it is cool but yeah know, that's not a negative that, that's an editing uh, trick there yeah that's cool because it was edited very well yes. so I, I, that's not a negative for me but I did notice um, it was a little like huh we don't know it's a little ambiguous but I knew that Murray and Ernie Hudson were going to be in it and they hadn't shown up yet so I'm like well they're obviously going to go save the day and then Phoebe's going to help them you know join in because she's the new Ramus so it, I mean it, it makes it's sense fine. it's good but I just I wish I didn't know <laughs> that that was See, coming. I didn't know, but I knew. It was yeah, right, right, right. It was, it was yeah. you knew it was, it was pretty obvious. But that's um, fine. How great, by the way, does Ernie Hudson look? Oh, we were talking about that. that my, man is that so today. my ten year old. Now he doesn't. He wouldn't know any of these guys from Adam. But why does he look so much he, younger? He than looks at me <laughs> and he goes, he goes. Well, that guy looks really, really old. Bill Murray. Yeah. And then the guy on his left looks middle aged. Looks Middle aged, and the guy on his right looks a lot younger. And I said, <laughs> you know, they're all about the same age. Maybe Ernie Hudson um, takes better care of himself. And let's talk about the. Know. Did you stay for the post credits? Oh yeah, I stayed for mid. Okay, post. so let's talk about the post with Ernie. Can we talk about the mid? We can talk about the mid as well. Okay, 
uh, going through the the credits, uh, Sigourney mm -hmm. Weaver. Sigourney Weaver has been this. Oh, I know. Said, and then she oh, shows that that I'm was like, pretty good. That was pretty table, good. Like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was good. Mm -hmm. uh, that was awesome. And I was like, oh, there she is. And then I thought that was weird too. I was like, man, did I miss her or something? Was, was and then she, she like, shows was she up like a little cameo. I was so mad. And then but I, I love that they're gonna basically franchise refurb the old firehouse. Started up. Started up again. Hudson and his and I, I thought it was very touching that he's been paying for Dan Aykroyd's uh, uh, bookstore bookstore all these years, and someday it'll turn a profit. And very cute. Um, I feel like we're not talking about the biggest. And thing I love of, uh, what to Annie Potts. We love her. Well, she was in it, but like the fact that the whole movie is like. You know, I, well, I, I, I was Carol, gonna. Oh, I was okay, leading sorry, up. Sorry, that, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, sorry. I had already mentioned sort of the emotional the nature of it. I the, certainly cried. Annie Potts. I wish she was um, in it more. Actually, I actually wish she was in it more so, too. I like, I like Annie. Also looked great. By the um, way. Looks great. I see her all the time because she's the grandmother on Young Sheldon. Oh. Um, so maybe that's actually why she wasn't in it more. Maybe she was filming, filming that. Yeah. But um, I like her. But in any event, uh, I loved how they handled. This is goes back again to the effects. Um, I loved Egon. the Harold Ramis Egon um, tribute at, at the end for Harold. Again, the whole movie. The whole movie is like, is based around his character, it, and it's funny. It's like the whole issues behind the scenes of like, yeah. And I was even saying it's because I think not just as a, a beloved character, but having you know worked on writing. He is Ghostbusters, right? Integral right. Integral to it. So it's like when I think that was the thing when he died. I think a lot like, of people oh, were like, oh well, now this there'll never happen. be an official but, Ghostbusters but I, three. I loved, and it's kind of obvious with the whole afterlife ghost idea. But right. even though he's not in the movie. He's very much there because the ghost is the helping, time. and it feels like Harold's there, and it's believable. Egon's there, and it feels so. It feels very emotionally touching and genuine. And then when he shows up visually, great. at the end, great, great uh, CGI there. And I'm guessing, did they? I want. Like, I am surprised they didn't have him speak. I'm, to be honest, but I, I, I thought I, they were going to. I thought some people, you know, Troll actually said that he's just glad one they didn't or two. Even like if it was like an old line, they could like clean. That's up. what I was gonna say. I, I mean, he's and he's not just done Ghostbusters movies. He's done years and so years can, and years of movies. You can pick and choose. They can do you that. You could with have lines. some sort of even just him saying something like "It's okay" to his daughter or something like, yeah, or something. "I'm sorry," you know, sorry. to his daughter or something. Um, I think that would have it could added have even it. more there's, teardrops there's a, to my face. There's a but, lot of, but considering. They that could have been bad. It could have been cheesy. Maybe they tried and it just didn't, didn't sound right. Yeah. And, and you know what? Could it was be. it was handled gently and it felt good. He was like it reminded me a bit of they did talk in those, but the Harry Potter ghosts how they're kind of just sort of there. Okay. When Harry's like uh, parents come in, they're barely there. It they're hanging there like ghosts, but you can feel their presence. Right. But it's still emotional. It just felt like a specter, and it, yeah. and he was there. It was and, great. And what I was wondering is, I did they they must have found somebody. Uh, like to, to age him up, to age him down. I don't because like he yeah, looked, because you've seen what older Harold Ramis didn't look like that. He looked maybe like a little more right. chubby or something. Well, so, look, I mean, he, he, so he like, did movies pretty much up until he passed. Yeah, but he I, had played Seth Rogen's uh, father in Knocked Up, mm -hmm. and he's he's done a lot of different movies. I know. It just he looked like they modeled him after young Egon, I, and I'm like, how did they? Yeah, how did they do? This? I don't know. I think maybe they sort of blended with another the actor, new versus the old. It was, it was very well done. Yeah, and I, I thought, thought it was excellent, and for not Disney money. That's great CGI. Actually, yeah. Mocap or whatever. Well, look, when we think about Sony, other than Ghostbusters, uh what they what do they have? Venom. They I guess. Well, I guess not... I guess I guess you could count the whole Spider-Man universe. I always think of that not sort anymore. of as, as huh. Marvel, but right, huh. anymore it's more Marvel than Sony, but I guess. in terms of money. Yeah. Um, but who I mean, I don't know who I mean, right? Yeah. Columbia Pictures, Sony, I don't know. But yeah. they don't have James Bond. That's MGM. No. Mission Impossible is Paramount. Well, then they better... Well, look. Um, and, and they don't really have much in the way of animation division. If if this does so, come this off This could with be a, one of their big... Uh, things. Yeah, one of their big IPs. Because if there was um, a sequel following these characters, I would love it. I would, too. I would love it. All of them. All of them. So you do, you do the old and the new really combined this time. I'd like that. You know, I would like it too. That would kind of be something we've mentioned previously of what I always kind of wanted. I know what I, I know my buddy Troll really would like is sort of a traditional passing of the torch thing where yeah. you have them sort of mentoring a younger group. Yes. Which they, that I think they kicked around for. Like, well, and you know, I, I I had thought maybe originally that was the way they were going to go the most with this obvious route. until they started doing the, um, well, sort of the dailies for it and, and having screenshots and being like, oh, no, it's really about the, the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is fine. It's Which a, is great. It's, I, it, it worked out great. It worked out but yeah, well. I, I thought when I originally heard that they were doing this four years ago now or something. Yeah, we're talking about it a lot. Um, that, yeah, that it was going to be exactly that. 
the mentor. But I actually prefer this. I, I don't know. The I think family connection. And then maybe the second thing. one they could do that. Yes, but I, I would like it if if the original uh, remaining Ghostbusters were still around a little bit longer. I would like. Yeah, that. I I would love that as well. Especially if Ernie Hudson is down, just um, like he says. You know, if there's a steady paycheck, and he'll do anything. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, God knows he looks great. He yeah. pops up though. I and like every Ernie time Hudson. he does, I think of you. By the way. Why? You're a Hudson fan. When when did this? When, I when forget this, from what movie, but I'm a Hudson at fan. some point, maybe one of the indies we watched on Film Fanaction. But you were just like, oh man, I love seeing Ernie Hudson. I do like Ernie Hudson. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I, just, I don't know either. Oh, you know, he he's the uh, warden in Oz. The, oh, maybe that's what it is. Really okay, good. I don't there know if that's what it is, but I just um, like Ernie Hudson. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of all those. Uh, guys, all right, man. well, look, we've we've droned on as well, uh, long enough, like always. But uh, I think this was great to have you on for. Thank you. Uh, always um, good to be on for. I've, I've got to a couple new movies with you lately. We've done, yeah, Halloween, James Bond, this one now. We didn't do Venom, unfortunately. Um, I could have told you how much I love No, that. well, Venom. we had, that, uh, that actually might have been interesting because you like usually that I did, I think. we have at least in the, in, in, the, in the vein here, but yeah, you yeah, really hated, hated Venom. I hated it. Really hated it. Uh, but all right. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, Joe, thank you for joining as always. Thank you. We'll see you real soon uh, with some other videos. True. And uh, take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.